it is time to get Swifty. And you know why? Do you know why we're getting Swifty? Because how else do you make a project that's almost entirely code interesting? That's the neat part. You don't. So we're getting Swifty. What I built today is essentially Rick's wrist. Whether that means one of his fancy wristwatches or his actual wrist because he's basically a cyborg. Either way, it's time to unleash the Rick within. Rick's gadgets can do seemingly anything, which historically would have been a tall order. But nowadays we live in the world of smart home devices and AI. So today's gadget's gonna be able to control those smart home devices and as an added bonus, be able to leverage AI to process any command we can come up with in addition to the pre-made functionality that I'll be putting in place. So to make this sufficiently cool, I've been installing a bunch of smart home stuff, like this nest that required me turning off the master breaker of the entire house. Oh, well, that's all it No. Bro, you do not have power. Okay, good. But with that, I was finally able to get it to work and I connected it to my smart home. So I did some developer stuff and gave myself permission to mess with it. So then it was time to settle into my new office and breeze through the code because I realized no one wants to watch me do that. You like my new office? All right, later, bud. He's showing me his cool nuts. All right, let's make this quick and as non-nerdy as possible. We're basically using the same love triangles we had during the smart hiking stick with the Unihiker, the server, and Blue's wireless. So... For the server, you know that cloud you sometimes interact with? It's kind of like a bite-sized version of that. Unihiker is like a little computer that runs Python code, and Blue's wireless device is for when you don't have Wi-Fi, it kind of acts like you have a little bit of cell service so you can still make commands. All right, done. That's it. Ha! 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 Oh, crap. There, there we go. All right. Time for round one test. Actually, it's like round a million, but round one for you because now I know it works. Butler, set attic temperature to 72. Getting here was a bit of a pain, but it's a worthy cause. Yeah. Butler, set attic temperature to 73. Being able to control the nest enables the feature that inspired this project in the first place. Oh yeah. The short of it is, I like music stuff, and recording with a super duper loud HVAC doesn't really work. So for this particular feature, if I say, I want to record in 13 minutes, It'll blast the AC for those 13 minutes and wake up my computer after 12 minutes so it's good to go. That way, by the time I get back home, it'll be both comfortable and quiet. So now we just need to be able to remotely turn on the computer. Computer, off. Command, run. Let's see if it turns on. Oh, will you look at that? Any year now, you'll see that it's working. All right, whatever, loading bar, it's working. I still definitely don't trust AI with my code logic, but it is really good for tedious stuff. So I told it to add the various ways I may say each command, and it gave me this. I've always suspected that anyone who writes out regex is actually a cyborg, and this all but confirms my suspicions. Relevant to AI, next up to bat is adding it to our program. When we make an AI command, we pass that command along with a list of available devices that it can mess with and tell it how to format the response. It took me a bit to correctly pass the command to the custom devices, but after a short session of headbutting the keyboard, I got it to work. So I'll be putting together a device to show up its functionality, but we may as well wait until I'm doing that anyway, so we'll get to that later. Whoa, how'd it get blurry? Any hoodles, it's Blues time. The initial working title for this project was the Remote Remote, because I want to be able to control my smart home from anywhere, and that's exactly what Blues Wireless does. I found that the best way to connect the Unihiker and the note carrier is via USB, which is pretty convenient because that also happens to be the easiest option, and I like that. For anyone interested, you can see more in the project write-up, but basically I made the server accessible for external calls using something called Tunnel. So to hit the server with Blues, we just add a new root and put in that external URL. And with that, we can add our test command to make sure our remote remote is working correctly. And indeed it is. It successfully goes from our Unihiker through the Blues route to our Flask server, which is of course confused because that's not a command it's supposed to recognize. All that matters is it made it here, so it's time for a happy dance. You see all these numbers and letters in the background? Probably not. It's a little far away and probably blurry. But it signifies the end of the code part of this video, so it means I can go to bed and do the fun part tomorrow. And fun it is. After one more quick server tweak, I can now super easily control any new smart home devices I make. Now that it's all working great, it's time to actually make the wearable, you know, wearable. And the rest will be concealed by the lab coat. We were going to a Halloween festival downtown, so it's time to transform into Rick. 
Unluckily for me, this required some less than ideal improvisation. This is what I get for ordering the blue hair from China. Time for the backup plan. Oh, it smells weird. It feels weird. <laughs> it's crazy, all right? <laughs> Oh, it's so weird. Is that good, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Am I beautiful? Is that so everything? beautiful. Okay, wow. He is going for it. It's blue. After the festival, it was time to get back to work. Conveniently, I now had a fully functional remote remote. Butler, turn on my computer. Last but not least, what is Rick without his Meeseeks? Well, honestly, a lot of things, but whatever. It'll be perfect for showcasing the last bit of fancy gadgety stuff. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, well that was supposed to work. Oh, hopefully it's plugged in. Details. Wait, I plugged in neither thing. I'm a genius. Halloween, activate. Boop. And, boop. I think we're in business. So we put him in his box, made the box a little bit more me seek -see, and confirmed that it did indeed look awesome. All right, now that we've got this guy, we can get back to demoing the AI functionality. Butler AI. I have multiple Halloween devices named Halloween and then the number. For example, the second one is named Halloween 2. I want you to activate the first one. The reason I said it all crazy like was to avoid actually saying the name of the device we're activating so that we don't get any false positives. For it to actually activate, the AI will need to properly tell us to activate the device. Boom. AI controlled baby. Let's go. With that, I can do basically anything. This feels like it's probably the start of Terminator 5 or whatever, but it's cool. It's cool. Be gone, Meeseeks. So now the transformation is complete, even including Rick's flask. Mmm. Enjoy a nice swig of water. Just kidding, it's ever clear. So that's all the main stuff, but I did add some nice tabs, like lasers. Rick's always using lasers. Boom. Dig that, me six. And of course that brings us full circle to our special effects. Hope you enjoyed, and have a good one. Peace, Internet. I'm